Right, take two. Um, video went a bit wrong. Uh, crashed, so we're going to do it again. Uh, it turns out that uh, John Hardy, Edinburgh and Scotland flanker, has been provisionally suspended on uh, because there are suspicions he is taking cocaine. Um, it was a statement released Friday by uh, the Scottish RFU uh, saying that they were investigating the internal matter. He would not be available for selection for the Autumn Internationals. Um, <clears throat> Today, about two hours ago, his club Edinburgh have basically said he is suspending for he is suspended pending uh, pending an investigation over alleged cocaine use. So I'm yeah, not certain he's taken anything or done anything, but his his club captain and teammate um, has also got his own internal investigation with the club due to antics on a night out after last weekend's win over Zebra in the um, European Challenge Cup game. Uh, <clears throat> so there are. Things going on at Edinburgh that aren't good. Now, uh, John Hardy is not the biggest name in, in world rugby. I'm not expecting everyone to know who he is. Um, but with recent events with Zach Hardacre, Rangi Chase, and a fellow rugby league player who, again, for some reason his name just passes me by, and this is me being a bit thick and just having brain fade, but three rugby league players in two months were caught doing cocaine um, after games during drugs tests, so they are going to face lengthy bans. A young England cricketer has been caught and faced a two-year ban. Um, and now this. Uh, this is not the first time Rugby Union has had allegations of cocaine use with, within the playing ranks. Uh, Matt Stevens at Bath, again I'm going to use him as an example, I did in a previous video, and several of his Bath teammates, <coughs> who were teammates known because it was basically the entire playing squad. So, we've been down this road before. Um, so now, what goes from here? He wasn't caught by a test. That is stated in the statements that have been released. Um, but it appears he's either been caught by the police, uh, like the two New Zealand uh, rugby league players were over the summer after the Anzac Day test against New Australia in Australia. Uh, it is a police operation sting to catch a drug dealer. Had they bought from a different drug dealer, they wouldn't have even no one even known. So that's one possibility, or he's gone to the club saying, I have a problem. Or someone else has gone to the club and said, look, this guy's got a problem. So we don't know yet. They haven't released any further information. Um, but this raises the questions of what uh, protocols are in place for recreational drug use and how to get help. Um, there are different sporting bodies and different um, clubs have different protocols in place when it comes to player welfare and coming forward about issues with drugs and alcohol and, and whistleblowing policies and they seem to be failing across the board. I'm not saying every club has, I think some clubs and some sports deal with issues like this rather well. Others unfortunately do not. So it's a hit and miss affair when it comes to um, how you deal with it. Uh, we don't know what protocols Edinburgh have in place for for this kind of thing, like you know, coming forward and saying oh, I have an issue, or my friend, my teammate has a problem, I want to get him help, because that could be one of the reasons why he's internally suspended, um, and there's an investigation through the club. He will now miss the Scotland internationals, which means Gregor Towns is going to be ripping what's left of his hair out, because he's a bit of, a bit of thin on top these days, he's not got quite the mop of hair he used to have. Uh, he's going to be missing several key players. Uh, in key positions. He already has injuries to worry about and he's got tests against Samoa, Australia and New Zealand coming up and they are big challenges for his side as we are midway through World Cup cycle. So he wants to figure out where his best side is. Unfortunately he's now missing another key player. Um, but there's been a lot of instances this summer in the UK with, with sportsmen and women failing drugs tests or being caught in drugs. Uh, be it recreational or performance enhancing. Uh, the performance enhancing argument is a completely different topic. Well, not completely different, but it's another topic entirely and another s s related issue, but it's also a separate issue to discuss at another time. I'm not going to get involved down in that. Um, abroad, we've had things happen in Australia and New Zealand, which I've mentioned, uh, and we can revisit that and I can make videos on that if you wish, but it's it's a done deal. Uh, they, they basically... The fines dished out and the suspensions were, were piss poor minimal. I'm, I'm not going to go into uh, into that. That's clearly an issue. If you're a fan of New Zealand or Australian Rugby League, you want to take that up with, 
write to your local club or, or, or basically express your concerns to the governing bodies concerned because <coughs> over here in Britain I, I kind of find it kind of a plus point when Australia and New Zealand's national sides cock up because it gives us a chance of winning the World Cup but at the same time when we cock up it's like not again uh, it's a head and hands line like this going what are you doing but that's not a thing in America there's uh, in, in uh, Canada in the NHL there's there's a nice hockey player Mike Ribeiro who I've mentioned before he's having to retire basically to deal with his personal issues which are basically alcohol and prescription medication based abuse um, and he's got a checkered history uh, in, in the sport uh, if you don't know who Mike Ribeiro is uh, I would honestly say um, go online uh, Mike Ribeiro National Predators, you will find him listed in their squad for last year uh, and you can find out all the information you can about him on the internet. He is uh, over in America and Canada, a well-known sportsman in, in that sport, so it's not like he's not a household name. He plays for the National Predators, or did. Uh, as far as I know, it's this season he's taken out. He could be a permanent retirement. Uh, and there are other issues linked over there within American and American Canadian sport to do with, again, similar issues. But every time a player does this, I think to myself, what are you doing? I, I, I put, well, do this. I'm just like this, going, what? Really? It's like, did your brain implode? And this is me going, hell. And you've got to think to yourself, why do they keep doing it? There are reasons to do with, uh, he was injured for it, he had a lot of injuries this season, so that could have a part of play. He's getting depressed, he might have depression issues, or he might have got more free time, and he might have got into the wrong crowd. He has admitted, it is known that he has a lot of injuries the last couple of, last year or so, he has been injured, and he's his place as a starting flanker in the Edinburgh side is under threat. Simple. Uh, that is also well known. If you are a rugby union fan of the Pro 14. Um, but he could, uh, I've seen this happen many times, especially in these physical contact sports with misuse of drugs and alcohol and prescriptions. Uh, it does happen a lot. Uh, especially with uh, players who are consistently injured, they do get into a bout of depression and, and self-medication that, that leads from one addictive substance to another. Um, the same could be said for Gaza. Before ninety one and that injury, he was a bit of a party animal and a bit of a, a crazy kind of character and a bit of a maverick. And, that, and that's sort of what the teams he played for wanted. They wanted this maverick who was unpredictable on the pitch. Um, after that ninety one semi final in the FA Cup, when he gets sent off against Nottingham Forest and misses the FA Cup final and does his knee ligaments in, he wasn't the same player. And from then onwards, it was rather than him just being a bit of a maverick and a, and, a, and a bit of a, a jester and a, and, a, and a character in the sport, he went along the path of prescription, recreational and alcohol abuse, of drugs and alcohol. And look where he is now. So there are issues within, within sport and they don't appear to be confronting them head on. The initial statement was released Friday. It's now taken until Monday for the secondary statement from the club, not the, not the union, the, the governing body to come out. So up in the air. but I'm going to leave that there I could go on and on and on about this um, obviously more statements will follow uh, uh, such as the Zach Cardacre scandal which is still ongoing because we don't know if he's given a secondary sample and ha if he actually has been officially banned yet we just know he's still under investigation he's provisionally suspended by Wakefield and uh, in England RFL um, so he's not going on the World Cup tour this guy is not playing the Autumn Internationals and this is uh, again in the space of a few months we're talking incident after incident after incident. So it's 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 getting a recurring thing. Anyway, on that note, more information on this will come out in the following days and weeks. We've got to see what his club and the Rugby Football Union of Scotland state in full statements, and and see where we go from here. That's all for now. Um, if you're watching this video and you've reached the end and you've put up with my annoying voice for this long and this will be drawn on, please like and subscribe. Um, if you like my annoying voice, please leave a comment. Um, if you want to hear my annoying voice some more, please watch my other videos. Uh, there are many, many on my channel now. I'm, I'm, I'm producing quite a few a day. If you're interested in rugby, there's a few rugby stories on there. If you're interested in any other sports, um, seriously, check my videos out. Um, and... If you want any discussions, post on the discussion page or on this on this video, uh, on this topic, and I will get back to you. And I might even take up what you've discussed and stated and make a video about it. You never know; could make you famous. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll have another video again soon.